When a plant produces a substance which is causing the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people every year, you'd expect its cultivation to be outlawed, and it is. But when that same substance is also relieving the pains of millions of cancer sufferers and other patients, you'd expect its cultivation to be encouraged, and it is. I'm John Robertson, the former poison garden warden at the Annick Garden, and this is the story of Papaver Somniferum, the opium poppy. Opium is a white, milky substance which is formed in the seed capsule when it's first produced. After a few days it dries up and it's gone, so if it isn't harvested when the plant is fresh, it isn't there. It contains a number of alkaloids, but the most significant one is morphine. And we all know morphine is a painkiller widely used throughout medicine. From morphine you can synthesise another substance. Technically it's known as diamorphine but you've probably heard it by the name heroin. Now the people who grow opium poppies to produce morphine are not the same ones who grow opium poppies to produce heroin. And that leads to a bizarre situation. There is a shortage, particularly of diamorphine, because not enough opium poppies are being grown. But at the same time there is a glut of heroin, because so many opium poppies are being grown. The ability of opium to produce sleep has been known for about three and a half thousand years, possibly more. It's first recorded in a document known as the Ebus Papyrus, which has been dated to 1500 BC. It's a recipe book for medicines, and from the way it's written it would seem that it is simply noting down medicines that have been known for a long time. It gives the use of opium to help babies to go to sleep. For this purpose, it's mixed with fly excrement. Now that tells me two things. First of all, it may have been more psychological than physical because I think if I was a small baby, the second time my mother said to me, if you don't go off to sleep, I'm going to give you some more of that opium and fly crap, I'd probably go to sleep. But the second thing it tells me is that there must have been an awful lot of flies in ancient Egypt if it was actually possible to collect their excrement. But opium was used to produce, promote sleep and reduce pain for many, many years. The opium dens of China are well known, but many people think that's a misrepresentation. In China, in the 18th and 19th centuries, there could have been as few as one doctor per 100,000 people. So if someone was in pain, their only recourse was to opium. And if they became addicted to it, well, that was unfortunate. Morphine was first extracted from opium in about 1817. Bizarrely, the reason for extracting it was because people thought it could be used to treat opium addiction. They didn't realise that it was the morphine that was causing the addiction. Just as an aside, cocaine was initially extracted from coca leaves because they thought you would use cocaine to combat morphine addiction. But morphine then has been around for nearly 200 years. And its stronger form, diamorphine or heroin, has been around for most of that time also. These days, most of the heroin produced in the world comes from poppies grown in Afghanistan. For the last three or four years at least, Afghanistan has been responsible for producing over 90% of the world's supply of heroin. Although it's often noted that Afghanistan is producing over 90% of the world's heroin, that misses an important point, which is that supply is dramatically exceeding demand. The heroin produced in Afghanistan is about 130% of the existing world demand. Now no one quite knows what's happening to all that unsold heroin, whether it's being deliberately held back to keep the prices high, or whether there is actually a limit to the market for heroin and people selling it haven't been able to increase that market. But whatever. There is far more heroin being produced than is being consumed. And that actually leads to a problem with one of the often suggested ways of dealing with the problem of opium poppies being grown in Afghanistan. There is an awful lot of land in Afghanistan which is not being used for growing opium poppies. If you were to stop the existing growers, then other growers might easily take their place. Farmers in Afghanistan 
earn about $1 billion a year from growing opium poppies. And you might think that would be the cost of stopping the trade, but it isn't. Because as I say, there are lots of farmers who aren't growing opium poppies and could, so they would need to be compensated to stop them moving into the trade. But more importantly, there's the, what we can call, added value. The value of heroin to the Afghanistan economy is nearer two and a half billion dollars. So there's one and a half billion dollars of, of packing, shipping, preparation, and everything else. And most of that one and a half billion dollars is going to the insurgents, which we tend to lump together under the name Taliban. If you were to just pay the farmers one billion dollars to stop them growing opium poppies, the Taliban would go and find other farmers to grow it for them because they wouldn't want to miss out on their one and a half billion dollars. If you bought out the whole industry for two and a half billion dollars, you would actually be paying the Taliban. And that would amount to paying the Taliban to kill NATO troops. And that obviously is just not politically acceptable. I'm John Robertson, and you can get more information on poison plants at thepoisongarden.co.uk